everybody, and welcome back to Monster Loves You. Hopefully, this is immediately after last time, so we'll just continue on. Hopefully, it's doing pretty well. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Okay, could be frosting. Oh, fluffy pink cake. Blot says he stole this from a human child. I highly doubt that. What do they say frosting is? Three cups of con oh. <laughs> they actually give a recipe. Huh. Think about it like, hmm. First one to center wins. I got the plate. That's right. With my non-existent mouth. Maybe my mouth's up my bum. It's entirely possible. Got my ferocity, cleverness, bravery, honesty, kindness. Okay. What did I say? Okay. Adventure in town. Two more days. Me, or I, Nash Gash, and Gob Claws hide in a stand of prickly thorn bushes, watching human children run back to their bus. But what's that they left? Shiny red round things? It's a scooter. I'm pretty fast. We all charge out of the bushes, only to trip over each other and land in a big pile of feathers, scales, and fur. Now what? I refuse to be defeated. Kicking the others in the face, I lunge toward the scooter, only to be- only to be tripped. <laughs> what a dick. Oh, it's a she. Okay. Bitch. Bitch! Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Last day. It's a cloud. Suddenly, a stink- the stinging rain pours down, everyone scatters and gets under cover, even blistery and smark. How bad is it? It's just rain, water falling from clouds. Does hurt a little, stings, you know? Ooh. Oops. Sometimes really hard rain like this has been known to get stuck under monster's skin like little splinters and then you can't- it can hurt for days. I see. I'm running undercover. While the rain pours down, you cuddle with blistery and smark under the bleachers. Let's play a game. Take turns opening your mouth, the mouth to the falling rain. Trying to stop a cup all the drops. Unfortunately, you choke and spit a mouthful of water at smark. I am a dick. <laughs> uh, okay. It turned out pretty well. Okay, adolescence is fleeting, you've grown beyond youth and have become an adult. I am an adult! You've been dragged from your bed by your friends and neighbors. Trying to sleep here. I surround you and hold you down, not er ungently, until you stop struggling. Fine. Neighbors throw me into the center of a great circle of monsters, all older than you. The monsters murmur and mutter, spit and snarl, they deciding what best defines you as a monster. Yeah, I'm going for the dick motif. Some of the monsters flinch when you raise your voice. It's gratifying, but it doesn't seem to make their deliberateness, deliberations any less deliberate. Eventually, though, they come to a decision. About bloody time. The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over me, while the smaller adults crouch low. What's happening? My body becomes tougher, and other grown-up monsters will most more likely will be more likely to listen to me when I speak. The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tight circle. Elders loom over me while the smaller adults crouch still. Okay, what do I want from Minial? I see concern in some of their faces, but very little respect. I 
become an adult without earning any respect, but when the time comes all too soon to become an elder, you'll dissolve and pass away without it. Okay. See concern in some of their faces, but very little respect. Yep. Yeah. Claws scrape against claws, teeth click against teeth, and snarls echo behind growls. You're ferocious, no doubt about that. Grar. Someone shakes out a sack, five angry weas weasels spill into the circle, they hiss and charge at you. I got ferocity in spades. Jump high into the air with a terrible shriek, landing in the midst of the startled weasel gang. Before you can escape, you've scooped up all of them in your mouth and bitten their heads off. Yeah, woo! 99%. Wow. I'm an adult now. Grow stronger over time, but my personality is no longer as mutable as it was when you were young. I look the same. Politic with monsters. Spitters! Today's the day of the spinner... Wow, 500. The big spider race. Winners are rewarded highly by all... Highly by all around town. Okay. Let's do this. Your spider hurt her leg this morning. What should you do? I'm not gonna cheat. Enter mine unassisted. Out of 13 entries, your spider comes in 14. <laughs> well, okay. Ow. Oh. Explore the whale mist. Something with a mouth. Following a deer in the forest when the trail comes to an abrupt end just in front of the cave entrance. The hoof prints look strange, like the deer doubled back, walking backward in its own trap. It's a trap! Okay, so what what do you do about it, smart monster? Hmm. I should fight the trap. Turn the trap against the deer. Walk into the cave and find Hamrag. Taking one of the huge monsters known for his irritability when he's awakened. Twig snaps in the bushes, the deer's fleeing. Hmm. I draw the deer closer, streak and crouch, ready in your claws, hammer strut. Now go! Max Furosity. The deer has crept forward to watch, and you spring the trap. Catch by surprise, and I, as I leap. Back out of the cave. Kill with a single swipe of your claws. That'll teach it. There you go. Have some deer meat. Wow, that sounded like it might have peaked. Mollify the huge monster with half the deer carcass. Hammer says, hey, you can wake me up anytime. It's gonna be me like this. Okay. Oh, I did get five. Okay. Gotcha. You're back, Hamrag. Do, 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 do. I think I'll politic with monsters now. I can yell at people. It's the scream along, sing along. Everyone's screaming. The loudest monster wins. I'm pretty, pretty loud. No, that's cheap. You're totally gonna break some windows and eardrums. But why are all these monsterlings here? Your singing has been known to hurt their little ears. Sing about loss and secret love and a plate with no pancakes on it. <laughs> what about waffles? Song sad and strong, but the other monsters sense that you're holding back. The monsterlings, on the other hand, are terrified. Cut loose, full power. The monsterlings flee as your song shatters windows and causes clouds to break apart in the sky. The other monsters carry you around portent square on their shoulders and humps proclaiming you their musical hero. Though I see... Well, they should not been out. Why didn't I get anything for that? I'm gonna politic some more. There's a snake. The snake moon is rising in the sky and it's time to gather snakes for the ritual. What is the snake moon? Sometimes the full moon has shadows on it and that's got to mean something. Monsters celebrate these shadows with snake soup. I'm going to gather some snakes. 
It's easy to catch snakes, but every time you reach for another one, some of them squirm out of your grasp. I'm gonna... yeah. Ten snakes. Boom. Many other monsters brought live snakes, but they let you put in your dead ones in the scaly cauldron. Was I... S I mean, it's, they're gonna be dead by the time you eat them anyways. Let's go exploring. Sword. Find a red hood. Uh, a red hood and basket in the middle of the forest pass. A human house is nearby. Funny you never noticed it before. There's a white picket fence out front. Circle the pretty little house. There's a great deal of blood in the yard, along with half dead uh, with a half dead wolf coughing weakly. I'm gonna kill the wolf. Nom nom nom. Haul the strangely heavy carcass back home and an elder points out a sewn up gash on the wolf's belly and says it was good work. I didn't do it. The elder's impressed with your honesty and says so. You open a gash and find stones inside the wolf. How odd. Weird. Wonder who could have put those there. A neighbor of the elder monster, Alalia, walks slowly in the direction of the rude cave. You know, I don't know where that little, little Red Riding Hood story originated. So I don't know if you guys know about it. Assuming most of you guys are from Poland. I think you would. I think it's around that. Somewhere in Europe, I think. But anyways. Some form of it, at least. Who is Alalia? She's one of my next door neighbors, but she's much older than me. Months and months. She's tough scales and eyes of several different sizes. What are you doing? She passes down the road. Some of the other elders nod to her. And they go to their hovel and start smashing things. What's going on? Greed Blitz stops tearing apart Alalia's dining room table and says she feels herself beginning to dissolve. Oh no! They become part of the next generation, of course, silly. They get to a certain age, they either settle into their personality and, cha and shape forever, or they let themselves become one with the slime, and for from which they came, their personality can have an effect on future generations. Hmm. Thank you for your contribution. I'm gonna be remembered, Alalia. And we'll see a bit of you in every monster thing from now on. Alalia wipes away a slight tear from one of her small eyes and sniffs. Tell her a joke. Why did the talking wolf say the bear? Uh. Maybe that would have worked better with cleverness. Uh, well, I told the joke. Her ears just fell off so she couldn't hear it. Goodbye, Alalia, forever and ever. So, let's get to politicking with some monsters. Some broken arm thing. The spine doctor is treating two injured monsters in the Portland Square. I've got advanced neurosurgery. She breaks off her own quills and uses them like sewing needles. A little iron pot boils over a small fire, but it's just water. The doctor seems to have run out of something. Who is the spine doctor? She's Marinus's cousin twin. That's a cousin twin. And there's many pointy bits all over her body. She's an ancient monster, older even than the, an elder, and has healed the sick for many years. Let's see who's hurt. Prudence and Prifrock are lying prone, both covering, w covered with long, straight lacerations, blood and slime seeped from every cut. I'm gonna get involved. Join the spine doctor who accepts you approvingly. How will you aid her? The cut's closed. <laughs> um, I'll go get some medicine. Doctor nods to you and sends you to her hovel for a big clay jar. When you bring it back, she opens the lid, revealing hundreds of leaves, twigs, and dead bugs and human pills. She selects a few by feel alone and feeds them to the patients. I did it. 
Let's go to the whale mist again. Something bloody. Let's talk to Forrest. Hunting an elusive swift elk suddenly emerges from the underbrush, lowering its antlers and pawing at the ground. It's gonna charge. Tear it apart. The elk charges and I duck under it, slashing a hole in its chest, but instead of a heart, you find nothing. What the shit? The elk bounds away, unkillable. There's nothing that's unkillable. I keep clashing, chasing the elk until it pauses to drink from a stream. Then I spring at it without fear and tear it limb from limb, head from body, antler from skull. Roar! Its pieces are still twitching as you devour them. You're filled with strange heat, but it soon fades. How bracing. Other monsters comment on the new swagger in my step as I return to Omen. Ate the unkillable be 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 thing. I'm guessing it was probably a ferocity thing. Check. But I've got 100%. Okay. Moving on. I've got like four minutes left to get six days done. Spine doctors asked me to catch a, sp a special fox. It limps, she says, and coughs. I need it quickly, if at all. Why does she need the fox? No time for questions. After it. Go forth into the forest, trailing the fox. As I get closer, you catch a glimpse of it. I catch a glimpse of it. Ragged ears, two trees. The fox is limping slowly. Get closer. As I draw near, you smell something sickly sweet. The fox slumps and vomits green matter onto the forest floor. Claw your claws tremble at the thought of touching it. Yeah. Shit. Whoops. Uh, I think it might have killed me if I hadn't. Oh, uh, I'm gonna go back in. Food. As I explore the whale mist, you notice that the air smells faintly of gingery bread. There ahead, there's a flock of fat birds pecking a trail of crumbs that winds through the trees. I'm gonna follow. Leads along a twisting path you never knew existed. Deep in the forest, you come across a rickety human house which smells of baked goods. You hear human speech, two children are babbling away. Them and the children. The human children look tired and very thin, but their bellies bulge as though they've eaten a huge meal. They're so weak that you don't fear for your life being so close. Okay. I'll wait for them to leave and I kill the witch. Smoke begins to burn from the windows of the house. Children flee deeper into the forest, laughing. Flames rise to engulf the whole house. You hear an adult human screaming inside. Okay. God damn it. Fuck it, Hansel and Gretel. Explore the whale mist. Nah, I'm gonna go politicking. It's a rock. Sit with Nash Gash and Gob Claws on a tattered red blanket, eating cookies and talking about artifacts. What are artifacts? Artifacts are human made objects, many monsters collect them. All of the garbage, cans, and omen were collected from one human bus stop. Some artifacts are interesting, some can be dangerous. Okay. I sit with Nash Gash and Gob Claws on a tattered red blanket, eating cookies and talking about artifacts. Continue it on. I really like artifacts. I want a nice big collection, but it seems like I can never find good ones. Glance. Know some good spots. Oh, tell her. Put it in my mouth, but gas and that guy kicks me hard. And why? Oh. What? I'm gonna tell her anyway. Gobclaw clicks her pincers happily as she does a little dance. Thanks, she scuttles back off into the woods to check out the places. Okay. Why? I am 100% ferocious, thank you. Find blots hitting a dented alarm clock. 
I have bells that don't ring. Before he can answer, he throws the clock over his shoulder and glowers at it. I'll try to fix it. Pick up the clock and examine it with care. It's so complicated, more complicated than anything monsters ever made. That includes monsterlings, wheels and cogs, gears and levers. Keep poking at the clock. Oh, I maxed my cleverness. Even though it's so complicated that you might get your claw caught inside or get a spray in the eye or accidentally hurt blots. Hurt blots on purpose for that matter. Yeah, go for it. Turn the key around, making clicking sound, and the bells go ding. Stop when I'm ahead. The clock ticks and talks. See, if I had kept going, it'd probably break. Pretty sure it's actually keeping time. If only you knew what little arms and hands meant. Well, in any case, Blotz goes around showing everyone how he fixed his artifact. That's right. Two days left. Okay, I think I'll keep going with this then. Hmm. Come across a scene of hundreds of frogs, all gathered in a stream bank. They're ribbiting back and forth in what is clearly a debate of some kind, watched by a stork. I'm gonna eat the stork. Ignoring the amphibian debate, you seize the snork and bite his feathery body. By the time you're left, all the frogs have settled around the log. Got five respect for that. I just selected their new king. That's right. And I'll finish up with politicking with monsters. All of Omen is buzz, elders glare angrily at everyone, and then look back at the broken sign at the town gate. Look down at the little piece of the sign you're holding and blush. What did I do again? Coming back from a hunt, you're so full of high spirits that you jumped up and slapped the sign. You just slapped a little too hard and claws, okay. Yes? Blistery st spots the bit of sign that you're holding. Hey, don't tell anyone you broke it. It'll get fixed. So I'll blow over. It's just a ill wind that blows over and no blows nobody any good. What's she on about? Blistery is often accused of thinking she knows everything. This includes human cliches. All of them. Hmm. Blistery says, I can take care of this. Look, I took a bit of the sign too. I can slip some into... <laughs> that's it. Okay, I'm a dick, but that's... That's just too far. Nobody's ever believed him since he's always lying and stealing things. Oh, shit. Oops. Well. Hmm. Growing old, my friend, your body is very soft, and you drip slime everywhere you go. It's getting hard to leave your hovel. Hello, Spine Doctor. The doctor tells you that your time's almost up. You'll soon reach the end of adulthood, and you'll either ascend to elder status or dissolve into slime. No. I already know that. What happens when they ascend? Move on to elderhood. Okay. I, I mean, I might as well ask. Find out there's a treatment that might prevent your dissolution. Learn more about the treatment. The doctor says the treatment involves an extract taken from the tentacle ferns that drone the whale mist. I'll face this head on. Turn to my hovel. The doctor bids you good luck as you depart. Time for the final roll, I think. A group of elders is waiting at the door of my hovel seen my drippings, they know it's time for me to dissolve or ascend. The elders of Omen surround you in the spawning vat. They built the fire beneath a small cauldron. My body is squishy and damp. Time to be tested. Masked elder comes forward. She says, it's time to decide. Yes, women are... They're monsters. They got deep voices. All the elders growl and snarl. The masked elder claws herself. Three drops of liquid spatter against the hot bottom of the empty cauldron. Thick vapor rises into the air. Is that blood or slime? You can't be sure. It depends on how much she respects you. The masked elder asks, who has already decided the fate of this monster? None of the other monsters have come forward. They don't respect... Aww. Let's place five flat stones on the ground before you. Choose one. Chance will guide your claw. 
Look at the stones. Each stone is stained with old blood and polished by a touch of many paw. You can't tell one stone from the others. Damn it. Pick a stone that looks good. The other side of the stone is etched with a crude glyph. It shows one monster kneeling beside another injured monster. The Masked Elder says, we will test your kindness. Shit. Huge Elder carries another monster close to the cauldron. The other monster is half melted and hard to recognize. Look closer. It's Nash Gash. Or what's left of her. She's begun to dissolve like me and her condition's far advanced. Masked Elder, we have decided that Nash Gash is too violent. There's a place for pure ferocity in our world, but it must be tempered with other qualities, like cleverness. See her eyes? She still seethes with pure rage. Doesn't look like pure rage. Perhaps you can calm her before the end. Hmm. I see a gold thing there. So let's go for it. Claws might be weak, but hers are the only part of her that is still strong. I bleed. In close, wincing silently, she draws a new line of red on your hide and hold her tight. She finally sees it. She really releases her. She's gone. The next stone. The other side of the stone is etched with a screwed glyph. Shows two monsters fighting. Time to test my ferocity. Two large monsters seize you from behind. They growl and try to pull me apart. You flick your claws out and squirm around to face my attackers. With a blood curling shriek, you give each one a face full of slices. Several monsters howl their approval and step forward, adding more fluids to the iron cauldron. Hold the cauldron, which contains the portentous infusion. It's heavy. Look in the cauldron. It's half blood and half slime. At least some of the elders support me. I hold the colors. Okay. I drink the bubbling concoction, then belch and howl. Yeah, I'm an elder now. What, what? Kindness was 74%, so that's cool. Nice, I'm now an elder. I'm welcoming Zack, Snack, the oldest of the monster towns. Oh, there's more. Holy shit. In this stage of life, if you play your cards right, you'll be able to affect both the ways of monsters. View humans, vice versa. Use your powers of persuasion wisely. I forgot that there was more. Huh. Well, I've gone well over, almost 30 minutes, so I'm going to call it there. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, whatever it is you decide to watch I'm in. Goodbye!